Hey everyone, welcome back to The Creatives. I hope you all are doing well. On today's episode, we have Jason Robinson. He is an artist, an educator at the University of Mary Washington, an experimental filmmaker, a movie lover. We get into a lot of good stuff today on the episode. And one of my favorite parts, I think, was when he was talking about his new film, Wear and Tear, which is an autobiographical poem um, about kind of COVID and the year that he's had and he filmed it on a super eight camera that he got at a thrift store and you all can watch it in his it's linked in his bio and his instagram which is linked in the show notes below and i feel like you all should watch it first and then come back to the podcast it's only eight minutes and it really really is a great a great expression of jason robinson i think and we also talk about his favorite movies um what he grew up watching and what it means to be an educator and also an artist. So I hope you all really enjoy this episode. It was a really special one. And enjoy. Welcome, Jason. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, of course. So I guess we'll just kind of just jump right into how you got into your creativity. Um, what was crea- What was your relationship with creativity growing up? What was that like? Well, so I've always really been into like super into movies, like from a very, very young age and uh, just kind of obsessed with everything uh, cinema, I guess. And then uh, but not art really at all. And so I I was um, my dad was in the Navy and we moved around a lot and I was living in California at the beginning of sixth grade and uh i was taking an art class there and then we moved and uh to virginia and i didn't i didn't take another art class until uh, i was getting my mfa which a lot of people oh, wow. okay. liked like i did not take any art classes in high school or college um but i stayed really involved in filmmaking and so I went to and I made I started making my own films like with a VHS camera um, with and like any time in school when like there would be like a creative project or whatever. I'd be like, can I make a movie or something? And, you know, like I was always sort of looking for opportunities to do that and like, you know, getting all of my friends involved um, and learning about editing. And this is like this is super analog uh, video. I was like hooking two VCRs up to each other to like to edit and um and and uh and this is you know also uh pre like youtube too so like there's like you can't it's so much easier to just look things up on like how to do them so i was doing that and i was just like sort of obsessively watching movies and decided for um like pretty early on i guess in high school that that's what i wanted to study in college and um with the like maybe not the like with the idea that that was the what was going to keep me interested in college and 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 want to finish you know <laughs> so uh so i went to penn state uh in uh state college pennsylvania which has which is a, a massively gigantic school right. uh, i think it's that like a whole the, city right mm-hmm. like it's like yeah, a there's whole nothing city else yeah, yeah there's nothing else there except for the school so it's pretty wow. crazy so there's like no really other industry or anything around like uh, it, it's not, um, anyone who lives there pretty much is like somehow associated with the school. Uh, and, uh, no one just moves there to just live there. Wow. Uh, and so, uh, that was, that was a, a, a pretty good experience. Um, it, it wasn't like, uh, the film program was relatively small. The school has like over when I was there, had like over 40,000 undergrads. And then, but, um, the film program was like under 200 people. Oh, cool. So, um, it, it, so it, it had, I had sort of like small school and big school thing, but I went there thinking like, I'm going to, I'm like obsessed with like, like Quentin Tarantino and stuff like that. Right. And I was like, I'm going to make like movies where with like, you know, really clever dialogue and, you know, and, and interesting characters and that you know pay tribute to the history of cinema and like that i was like super into like watching as many like just trying to learn like as much about films as possible and this is like right around that time is when netflix started when it was like dvd only yeah i remember so like i was like ordering like i was like or 
I had like lists of movies that like I had heard about that I had read about before. And I was just like ordering like all these like Chinese and like Hong Kong films and like just like all of these movies that like would never be at like my local video store. And uh, and 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 just like trying to learn as much as possible. And so I, I got to school and I started taking film classes. And I think like maybe like my third film class was experimental film and documentary. Like half the semester was experimental film and half the semester was documentary. And I was like, this is it. Like, this is what I yeah. want to do. Like, I'm like completely changed, like everything that like, like my whole plan. I was like, I know because um, so much of like filmmaking is in, fil- in film school is it's group work, right? Like you're like, you're put you're, you're having to compromise a lot and you're having to sort of like negotiate all these kind of interpersonal things with people who have different ideas from you and you're getting put on crews. So like, sometimes like you're the director, but then sometimes like you're the sound guy or whatever, Uh you know? And like, and so like, that was like, I, 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 I learned pretty quickly that like I, that I didn't like it as much when I was becoming part of like this big team. And then I learned about like these films that were that like completely captivated me that were made by like one person or like a really small group of people. And, um, and it, and then I was, and at that time too, the, 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 the professors, the two like main professors that were teaching that kind of work were like super influential to me Mm -hmm. and like, and made like a, a really huge impression on me. And so and and they made they were experimental filmmakers and so i realized like sort of at the same time that i could make these films and i could still have a job because yeah. i really I, I could teach and i was like you know what that's really cool because i could because i could continue to do this kind of stuff and then and and i really like it wasn't just that like oh i could have a job because you know it, it was that it was that it would be i it seemed like it seemed cool it seemed like something that, that, that I would be into. So that, that, that's, and then, then it was kind of on that path from there, I guess. But um, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Let's jump back a little bit. When you said you were like, uh, just obsessed, like watching films, what films when you were younger really stuck out to you and got you interested in movies? Um, well, so the, <laughs> I, I like when I was, I was sort of came up in the eighties and nineties and in the eighties, like they just like, I don't know, it was like parents, but then also it just seemed like, like much more socially acceptable to let children watch R rated movies, which I'm not sure like when that sort of changed, but like my, my dad, like uh, my dad got me into movies at a really young age. I don't, my dad is not like into art at all. Mm -hmm. My, like my family's not, I never really went to a museum or a gallery or whatever until um I was much much older until I could sort of drive myself but um the but I, I so I started just I watching everything like for like a lot of things from I think about stuff like having a kid now and think about like when I started letting him watch sort of more mature stuff and then he that seems still kind of like young for his age but but then I was like man when like I was watching R-rated movies when I was so young but to answer your question um uh I, I guess like what i mean star wars first for, for, was the first thing that i was completely obsessed with so like we had a, only like a limited number of like videos and mostly our videos that we had at our house were not like purchased they were from like free we would sometimes they would give you a, a they do a promotion and give you hbo for like a weekend Whoa, and then, okay. so we like record things off of hbo so like my like initial library like my like sick day library when like no one would take me to the video store it was like the the star wars films like the indiana jones films um revenge of the nerds which has not aged well at all um a lot of uh, uh, um, and um and and stuff like that fletch like a lot of just sort of like 80s comedies and then right. and then when then when i i got a l- little older I, I started getting into like more you know i, I discovered like um all the scorsese uh, stuff and uh, w- which you know really sort of captured my attention and then um, uh, like seventies like Bruce Lee like all kind of, all of the sort of like seventies martial arts films um, I like 
like when I'm going to like sit down and watch a movie, even to this day, like I want, like, I like, like trashy stuff. Like I like bad movies. I like action films, like more than anything. Like I'm not like, I don't, you will never like catch me like relaxing on a Friday night, like putting on like some like art house, like three hour, like super slow thing. Like I, I enjoy that like so much, but like that, but like, that's never, going to be like my go-to thing and that's definitely not something that i'm like uh you know like hey family gather around let's watch like you know whatever An art film. woman on fire yeah. yeah so how does that those like would you consider those like not like b movies like like horror b movies but like that genre that you're describing like, sure yeah i think you can i think we can call them b movies yeah okay. i like horror films too like okay. i like yeah i like yeah i like um just you know like maybe I mean, I don't know, this sounds bad and maybe like counterintuitive to like everything that I've talked about, but like, is, you know, like the less pretentious things maybe. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> How do you think that as I feel like art and creativity has like a level of pretension in it, like already or can have it. Um, how do you think that those films like influence your work or do you think they influence your work at all? Uh, I, n- n- I don't think they do. Like, yeah. I mean, I think like, I, I think, so I, a lot of people that like make like sort of experimental work, like I think in 2022, like sort of went, like uh, they went straight to it or they went to it. Like I'm talking about like video or film work. They, or they went to it from like painting or sculpture or something. And I went to it from like learning like, traditional filmmaking and learning all of the rules and sort of understanding it and making a lot of things like that follow the rules and then and then like sort of testing uh, like how and figuring out like how I can break those rules or, sub- or subvert them or whatever so I it, in in that way like um it, it I think it in, informs my work but like I'm not, I've never, even like when I was like fully immersed in, in film school, I was never one of those people that was like, I can't enjoy this movie because I'm just thinking about like how it was made, you yeah. know, or like, you know, it's like, you should be like, that to me is like, uh, like the worst thing that could possibly happen. Like you should be able to like turn all of that off. Like, it, and there's even times when people are like, you know, like I would, there's this, uh, Zack Snyder like zombie movie called Army of the Dead that came on Netflix uh last year and he like shot the whole thing like in this uh with these lenses that like made only the main character in focus and like I there's like a lot of people that were like really upset by that I'm like it took me out of the movie because like you know it he he like used this really weird technique or whatever and I'm like you know, I was focusing on the zombies the whole time. So yeah. I was not like sort of, I was w- w- like watching Batista shoot zombies. I was not super worried about like the depth of field in the camera, but like, yeah, I, I luckily have not never fallen prey to uh, like over analyzing films as I'm watching them. Yeah. I think that can, can like ruin them to some extent, like taking yourself out of it and just like enjoying it is like all the fun of a film. Oh, like, sure. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Especially sure. when it's like that, when it's like, you know, uh, like you know what it is, like the film knows what it is. Like that is my favorite thing about them. Um, so how would you describe yourself as an artist or a creative person? What like three, three words, or how would you describe yourself? Um, oh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I could do it in three words, but uh, or describe I, your work. I think like the, the worker, like w- what I'm interested in is, and this is, I think, uh, been, you know, detrimental to sort of like getting my name out in a better way is that like, I, I don't, I'm not super interested in like, kind of like, um, staying in one place. And like a lot of my work is just about like, um, I still, there's so many different ways to kind of describe the work that I make, but I still often just say experimental filmmaker because like the experimenting part is a a really big part of my work. I'm really excited about like learning new things, learning new techniques, like learning new programs. Like it can be it it's so different to be working in kind of that new media space where instead of like, I mean, 
there's just new things happening all the time and there's new programs and there's new just like ways of making things. And I'm really excited about sort of like, you know, grabbing like doing like a deep dive into like after effects and trying to figure out like, basically like, how can I break this program, you know, or like, yeah. or whatever, even like Photoshop or, you know, I, I, I make films uh, when I have an idea for like a specific thing that I, I want to make something about, or a lot of the times it's like a lot of my films have come from like, Oh, I got this new camera or like I did this modification to a camera or I got this new piece of software. I, or a new feature came out in a piece of software that I already use. And I want to see like how it works and like how I can, um, like misuse it or like kind of break it. And then, and then, and then a lot of times like sort of a conceptual ideas start to form around those tests or an experiments. Yes. Um, and, but then sometimes I'm like, uh, I have like, Oh, I, I want to make uh, a film about this idea. And then I'm like, that's more of like a straightforward process. But a lot of the times it's just like, uh, it, I'm trying something out and then, and, and then I say, Oh wait, this is hold on, stop. Like this is, this, this, this can sort of turn into something, but like for every one of those that like gets somehow like even just put on my website or like shown in a festival or, or gets up in a gallery or whatever, there's like 50 things that are just like in a folder on my computer. And sometimes I go back to them and sometimes I don't, but like, I, I guess um, experimental. I think is probably like the 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 main uh, the main thing that if I sort of think about my work the, the way I would describe it. That's awesome, and I like how you said you like look to break something, and then that like informs your work. I think that's super interesting, or reworking something. I think that's a really cool thing that starts out sometimes like that, and then it flows into the concept. Because I think a lot of the times people always assume that like concept is first, and then you find your find your way into how you're going to fulfill the concept. Um, so I, I, I really like how that process is. Um, what's your favorite thing that you've like broken to, to make your work? For the well, most you've had? yeah, the thing that I've, I sort of, I did a film a few years ago. Well, I got really into the um, demolition derby that oh, they cool. have at, um, you know, at state fairs in the summer. And so I made a couple, I made two demolition derby films. And the first one was a, a camera test uh, at, for a new camera. And then the second one was, try, I had this idea to try out. Um, uh, there's, there's been this feature in Photoshop for a long time called content aware, a uh, content aware fill, where you can sort of like pick something up and move it to another part. And the, the, the AI of the program can sort of like uh, fill in the blanks. And so they, they, they added that to After Effects. And if you've never used After Effects before, After Effects is just basically Photoshop, except for it's for video. Mm -hmm. And you can do all kinds of animation and stuff in it. And uh, that program on its own, just using it normally is it's really easy to, you know, crash your entire computer using yeah. it. But uh, I, I started doing this uh, thing with the content aware fill where for the, um, for the, the the first the second demolition derby uh, movie that I made, I followed a car for the entire demolition derby race. I just filmed this one car, and then um, I erased that car, uh, like frame by frame, uh, rotoscoped it. I traced all around that one car uh, throughout the whole like five minutes, and then I deleted it. And then I told the program to try and figure out what was supposed to go there. Wow. So it. Uh, it makes the it, turn, it sort of turns the in that entire space like it elastic i guess like it, it's like there's like there's all kinds of like art, like art and video art about erasure but but normally it's about sort of the absence of something and this sort of was like trying to like add something back into it so i uh, i just uh that that was like i made that for a a show that i had um like a solo show that I did in the, in the DuPont gallery, um, awesome. two years ago, that, that was part of that. And then that, that was, I mean, there, um, that was the kind of thing where like I would do something on it and then I would like have to let my computer sit for like almost an entire day and yeah. then like come back to it and then, and then say like, Oh, like it, it worked or if that didn't work, I, I have to redo it. And so, 
that that was I was really excited about that, but the amount of sort of technical frustration that went along with that was uh, really um, oh my God, annoying. I'm sure. yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I just wow. picked that up again, and okay. I have a new thing that I'm working on with that's that's a, a lot less uh, ambitious in terms of the time and the amount, but like sort of that idea of um, I'm really interested in. Uh, generative art which is kind of like a buzzword now um, because it's like used so much like in the nft space but uh, but generative art just in the sense of that like you're sort of having this collaboration with the computer in the, yeah. in the sense that like you're 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 leaving some things open and having and asking the computer to guess like what, what what's going to happen next or sort of make like you're making some decisions as the artist and then you're allowing the computer to make some decisions that kind of kind of becomes this like weird collaboration. collaboration yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But it's, it's also uh, it's also like um chance which is something right. that i'm really interested in like chance operations I, like go back to john cage and a lot of different sort of really interesting like uh avant-garde artists from the 60s that were really into doing things like you know like com making a like a, a musical composition but like in uh choosing the individual notes by like rolling a dice or something you know and and so doing things like that so like being able to sort of add this sense of chance or randomness into your work that's really great and the fact that you can add a, like another collaborator that is kind of futuristic in a sense of like when we think of artists we think of the person but not the technology that goes with it so i think that's really interesting that you're harnessing that that power even though it might it might take a long time like now i can't imagine what it's going to be like in the future of like how that works that's really interesting and cool um have you met other people who have been doing the same thing or is it still kind of like in the pioneer space of of working with ai Oh, I mean, I, I mean, tons of people are doing things like that, that particular technique. Like I don't, I haven't met anyone who's doing that. I haven't seen any, any work like that. Cool. Um, which is one of the reasons why I was excited about trying it. Um, I, um, it, but in terms of like that sort of like machine learning, like that's like, that's so huge right now. And, um, so many people are doing like such, like so many different kinds of amazing projects with that. But like, I, I, I I think like if you're working with new technology, it's really important to be like suspicious of it, yeah. and and to and because I think it's really easy for like the 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 entire like conceptual basis of your work to be um I look at this new thing I'm using, you know, and 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 like it can be and and I think it's totally all right for like some of it to be some of the your concept to be about the tool and um as long as you're aware that it is but like i i think it's you're starting to getting into dangerous territory and uh if like that's all it's about right, right. and so um i think it's important to you know uh, like not sort of put that uh, or not always put the 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 tool in front of the artist yeah yeah that's a really good point i agree especially with how fast technology is is evolving i think that's a really good point um that shift gears a little bit um i want to talk about your newest experimental film wear and tear um that you got into the cosmic rays film festival um it was really interesting and i read the article that um that was written about it and they asked you a few questions about it and something that really well first of all Let's talk about wear and tear as a project itself. Um, where was that inspiration from? How did it come about? Um, and what was your process for for creating it? So I was um, not. I was having a hard time sort of making anything like uh, during that uh, the the very beginning of COVID. I finished like. I was, uh, another aspect of my work is that I do, uh, like live cinema performances where I sort of like, if you can imagine, it's just like, e like video editing live, like if like oh, a cool. DJ okay. and, and then, so like putting it together and, and mixing and, and usually in collaboration with a, a sound artist, I don't, I, I've, 
experimented with doing the sound in the video at the same time, but one of them always really suffers. Yeah. So I, so I, I had just finished this huge uh, project that was supposed to debut um, at this Seamus festival. Uh, and um, it's an electroacoustic music festival is like going to be a really big deal. And then, and that was like the week, everything shut down. Wow. So uh, I, I, I turned that, I spent the first few weeks of lockdown, like turning that into that performance into a standalone video. Okay. And, and, and then, uh, and then, and then I, I didn't, I couldn't really think about anything for a while. Like I couldn't, like nothing was, I didn't really have any ideas or like, I wasn't super excited about art. I was just kind of like putting all of my energy into teaching and um, which, you know, I, especially like that that transition to online like it did that required like a, that was using sort of like all of the space that I had yeah uh, and 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 then and then summer came I just wasn't into I didn't I was just not making really making much and um I was trying to make stuff but I, nothing was really sticking and I started having uh some sort of ideas about some about how I wanted to address some of the stuff that was going on just sort of how I felt and uh so I um I keep a lot of notes in my notes app uh and I and the whole film kind of like got laid out in in, in the notes app of, of my phone um and I, I I was kicking around some ideas I had a box of um super eight film that I I, when I first, when I was in college, in undergrad, and then right after I was really into shooting Super 8 film. And, uh, and, it, and then it got kind of, it's, pre it's real, pretty expensive to, to do that. And all of my cameras are from the thrift store. So like sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. And then, and that's like super disappointing when you spent however much money getting it developed and buying the film. And then, and then there's, it's all black. Because you have a busted camera. I know exactly. I get all my cameras, my film cameras from the thrift store. So I know exactly that feeling. It's the worst. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I, so I, but I decided you was like, you know what? It's been a really, really long time since I shot any Super 8. And I, uh, and I bought some and it was, uh, and, I, and I was being super precious with it. And yeah. I was like, not, not using it. And I was like, this is going to, this film's going to expire. So I, so I, we were going to the beach. I took the film to the beach and I, sh and I just shot, all, I had like five rolls and I just shot it. I didn't have any idea, any concept. I was like walking out into the water. I was like filming. There was this, uh, one day I came out and someone was flying a kite and I filmed the kite for the entire roll. Like I, I was just, I was just like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm using this stuff and I'll figure it out later. Ooh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. My bad. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> so I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out later. And I, uh, I, and I just kind of sat on, uh, on, on the footage and I didn't do anything with it. And, and, and then, um, the, uh, I, and then I had a, a, a really tough fall. Um, uh, and like my, uh, closest collaborator passed away, who was the person who I made the the film with uh, that I finished at the beginning of COVID. His name is Ryan McGuire. He's like a brilliant sound artist. And uh, and my doc died the same week. Uh, oh so gosh. I was like, that's a hard oh, math. And my and, yeah. and, and and my dog was 16. I'd, I'd had him since he was a puppy. And uh, and um, so th that was like, that was like a, a really dark time for me, but that a lot of these ideas about sort of like the isolation and the feelings around sort of, uh, uh, of this like COVID space as, uh, it's, I've heard it referred to, um, came from that. And that was just sort of like, and so I was just like making this film that was like deeply, deeply personal. And then, and, and but, I, and, and, I went back and I looked at the footage maybe uh, maybe like six months after 
I shot it. So I was kind of approaching all of that footage. Like it wasn't even mine anymore. Like it was like found footage. Like it was like something archival. Mm -hmm. And, and I started trying to put together these ideas, sort of like take all these ideas out of my notes app and, and, and put them together and, and make that film. And, and the whole sort of like concept of it and the, the, the title wear and tears based around this article I read on this um, uh, concept of this thing called allostatic load, which is like the long-term effects of, continued exposure to chronic stress on your body so mm. it, it literally wear and tear yeah. of just sort of like how like how something like like what we've experienced over the last few years can just sort of like gradually like wear you down right and so and that was kind of my concept and that was what all of these little but i made it as kind of like a series of like short films within inside the short film right. and uh and then and and i put it all together and and then i had a really a good festival run and played all over the world and played at a lot of different places. And a couple that cosmic race was the only place I got to go and watch it in person, like with an audience, everything else oh, wow. was like, I was like zooming in or I was just like, or it was like an online thing, or I was just getting like reports from the festivals and, uh, and time and time again, like when I would get feedback from people or, or it was that like how like relatable it was and how like they were like, I've had those same thoughts or like, I, I, th I was thinking about getting Invisalign or like whatever, like all these like specific like moments that I was like, these are like, just like my like personal thoughts. And then like, I was really amazed at like how much like it like was created as like this in in incredibly personal thing and like ended up being like, uh, so much more universal and like a lot of the ideas and feelings that are in it. Yeah. You, I, when I was watching it, I, I mean, exactly what you just said, like it's super relatable, but also you could tell like how deeply personal it was to you. And I think that like, we all kind of experienced the same thing, obviously COVID, like it sucked for all of us, but it's interesting how that film like taps into like the specific things and that we all share, which I haven't really seen before. So that was like really, refreshing how did it feel to like see a live audience reacting to your your work like the, like that's all that's always like the best and the worst yeah. thing because like it was like it was a i don't know it was like one of the first times that uh, i think a lot of those people that were like in the audience had like been in a theater in a long time and definitely awesome. like been in, like been in and so it was like people were like super into it and it was like really interesting to see like where people laugh because there was definitely parts where people laugh where I was like I don't think that part's funny you know <laughs> like that part is sad <laughs> but um but like the, the um yeah it, it was cool it was like it um I go kind of go back and forth on my opinions about film festivals and stuff I think like they're I think they can be really amazing. And, and, and then also sometimes it just feels like that, like, you know, you're just like throwing your money down a well, because like, unlike, uh, like so many, like, do you like film festivals? Like there's a lot of like kinds of art submissions. It would be like, Oh, if they're asking you for money, like it's a ripoff, you know, but like in the film world, like if you're, they're asking you for like 40 bucks to submit your film, like they're like, Oh no, that's like the best festival you know so it's like so you really have to kind of be and there's plenty of them that are free or low cost especially right. ones that are not in the united states but like you really kind of have to make a smart kind of plan about like okay here's the ones that i'm going to uh submit to because so many of them are like there's uh, this site called film freeway and you can upload your film there and then you can just start submitting it places and it's really oh, cool. easy just click submit 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 and then it's really easy to just be like oh shit i just spent like 300 bucks you know <laughs> and like and then like you want so it's like you and it, you want your work to get out there and yeah. like, and there's so many like cool connections and people i've met through doing that but at the same time it's like you really have to be uh smart to and and you know and to when you're when you're doing that because it's really easy to just waste all of your money yeah for sure that's how i feel about like submitting my photos to places especially like yeah not having a lot of money but that that's really really interesting what was you said you when you look back at your film it looks like someone else's um can you kind of dive into that of kind of expand on how 
kind of how you felt, how you felt that way before about other work that like uh, that was yours. Yeah. Well, so like when I first started making stuff, like I was really interested in, I've always been really interested in editing and that's what I did um, as a job for a while um, before I got into teaching and that uh, so I, I made a lot of like found footage films. So where I was like using archival films or mixing in things that I shot with like w- with archival footage. Um, and so I was just more so thinking about like l- looking at that footage and kind of a- a- approaching because I didn't have any concept when I shot it. I, it. It was more so it still felt like mine. It just was I was approaching it like it was something you know in the same way i would if i was using a bunch of archival material because i didn't have a plan when i shot it so i was thinking about how how i could use what i had and also since it was film it was like you know way less footage than if i would have been like making something that i shot on a on a digital camera gotcha gotcha that makes a lot of sense um next jumping into like kind of switching gears into your your professor professor hat um how does that professor How's being a professor of art kind of dictate your work? Does it, does it, do students like influence you sometimes or do you ever feel like you're, you're creatively drained? Like, how does that work for you? Well, no, I mean, it's, it's definitely the whole, the, it's all very inspiring because like I get to spend like my day thinking about art and looking at art. Um, the, and then, you know, like my professional development or whatever is like, you know, tr- trying to like think about new ways of talking about art and how to make art and also learning new techniques and getting better at it. Right. So it, it sort it, it helps to kind of keep me in that space. I had like when, when I was an editor and I was spending nine hours a day editing, like I didn't feel like coming home and editing my own film. Right. You know, but like if I'm spending the whole day like like talking and looking at art, like I I am much more inclined to want to feel like making art, you know, at at night, you know, or on the weekends. And so it 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 definitely is much better for that in terms of start finding a time to make it. And also like when you teach art, like you're that's like part of your responsibility of your job is to make art. So um uh that is also a motivator but um i uh yeah i i think that teaching is um is really great and i and i like sort of i am constantly blown away by the work that students make and i think it's really exciting to see what can come out of people's minds when they don't have like when they haven't seen all of the things and they haven't like they don't know all of the techniques and i think that that's one of the amazing things about art in general but like specifically about like video and film like new media stuff is that yeah sometimes you can like really make you can kind of just come out of the gate with like very little experience and like and you know make something incredible yeah i think i've always looked at at art professors as like kind of the the tastemakers or like the catalyst of of creativity for students sometimes, especially for me, I think not, I didn't do like studio art when I was in high school or anything, but going into UMW and having those like you and Rosemary, like having professors that really like introduced us to like good work um, was really impactful for for our own creativity. What's your favorite um, class to teach? I, I, I love experimental documentary. That was like, that was one that I, my class, like there's a few classes that I inherited and like that were, that existed before me. And I, and I kind of uh, reimagined and then, and, and then there, and then there's a bunch of classes that I've made up since I've been there because I was a new hire. When I got hired, there wasn't anyone that had my position before me. So they, they just had like a few digital classes. So like I had to come up with like a more of like a, like a full slate of those, that those types of classes. So experimental documentary is my favorite. It really, it's one that um, I keep like back to my love of the notes app, but like I have like a a note 
on my phone for every class that I teach. And so like anytime that like I see something and uh, I'm like, oh, that will be perfect. Like I want to show that like next time I teach the class, I like write it down or like I see any any kind of like, you know, like a YouTube tutorial that I'm like, oh, I want to learn how to do that so I can like teach the class or whatever, or just like a a new artist that I'm excited about. Kind of like I file it away for the next time that I teach it. And that one, every time I go to teach it and I look at my notes, it's they're just ridiculously long. Because like, I've got, I'm like getting, always getting so excited about new, uh, I think there's so much cool stuff happening in, in that realm of sort of experimental nonfiction, experimental documentary. And, and, and all that really is, is just sort of like making nonfiction films and then, and then finding ways to, or thinking about ways to subvert like our traditional expectations for documentary filmmaking. And there's so much cool stuff happening in that space. That's awesome. What's what's one cool film that people should check out in the experimental documentary space? That's like uh, oh geez, I I the one there's so many. Um, th- there's there's two uh, that I would recommend, and if I'm going to um, look this up really quick, so. Yeah, I don't say that. So I don't say I don't mess anyone's name up. Oh, okay. So uh, one is called Hale County this morning, this evening. And okay. it's made by uh, you would love it. it. Ramel Ross is the guy who made it. He's a photographer. And oh, cool. he, he he was on the basketball team. I also love basketball. We didn't get into basketball, but he was on the basketball team at Georgetown and he got hurt and he started taking photography classes. And he uh, and he and after school moved down to this uh, Hale County, Alabama, and started coaching basketball and teaching photography classes uh, in the, into this um, community. And it's this like, uh, it's this really beautiful film. It's only, it's barely over an hour. Like it's technically like not even a feature and it has a really um, incredible sound design, but it's, it's, um, it's this, just sort of portrait of this community and it doesn't have like a traditional structure and you sort of, there's no interviews. uh, You don't um, meet, you're just kind of like learning about these people and, and it is just poetic and, and beautiful. And it really, I showed it for the first time the last time I taught the class and like a lot, I always ask people at the end, like, what was your favorite film? And I was like really surprised at like how many people um, picked that as as their favorite one and it's just and it's on i don't think it's on um anything uh i don't think it's on streaming but you can buy it from or you can rent it for a few bucks from amazon and then the other one that people always really like is that i always like to recommend to people because it's like it's i think it's the best at like sort of maybe changing like your your concept of like what a documentary can be is this film uh from 2009 called sweetgrass um and it's it's just about uh is it in i think it's in montana um and it is about um like sheep farmers and it and 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 there's no there's no interviews there's no music uh there's no um it's just about it's just like the farmers working with these sheep and you would think like if you try to describe this film it sounds like the most boring movie ever and it is absolutely like captivating and um and 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 the way that it's shot and just sort of like seeing these people go through their lives and there's lots of like great sheep shots but yeah uh sweetgrass uh yeah, it is in montana uh sweetgrass and uh Hale County this morning, this evening would be like my two like introductions to um, experimental documentary. Awesome. Ones. I love portraits of communities. It's like my favorite thing for photography, for documentary. Like I, I like crave it. I don't know why, but it's so good. Um, so I'm definitely gonna check those out. Sheep shots. That's gonna be stuck. In my- they should have named it. Sheep shots. <laughs> I don't know what they were doing. It's got, yeah, it's got a lot of sheep shots for sure. Sheep shots. That's awesome. Um, I guess kind of my last question is for people who like want to dip into experimental work. I was talking to Emily Warren about her. Um, she's been using Super Eight 
um, and about her work, which is really cool. And she does experimental like photography and like scanning kind of type of stuff. Um, so for people who want to dip into experimental but don't know where to start because the field is kind of broad, I think, um, where wh wh what do you suggest where they start or how they start? I always tell people to just start trying to notice the things around you in your regular life that maybe you've kind of trained yourself to tune out. Like, I feel like a lot of it is listening, but I think there's also seeing things too a lot that maybe you, you wouldn't normally notice. And then, and then, and then start documenting stuff that you think sounds interesting, looks interesting, like uh, is curious to you. And then if you do that, like you'll have a film, you'll, you don't even, don't even know it, you know, like it'll start to just like appear, you know, on your phone or whatever. I'm really into, I'm like not a big gear person. Like I really am into filming things on my phone or like on r really uh, inexpensive cameras. And I, I, I don't think, I mean, just like the, the way technology is now, like, I don't think that it, it should be like having gear should ever like hold you back from making stuff. And I mean, you can even edit stuff on your phone now. Um, right. I, I, I am not savvy enough to do and My vision is not good enough to be able to do that. But like, I think that, uh, you know, there's not nothing really like keeping you from making stuff, but also like, um, I, I just still, you know, make the things that you want to make and then you can decide later on like what it's called or what sort of category it fits into or whatever. Um, but, and then, and you know, the cool thing is that you can just, you can make something and you can put it on the internet and then people that you don't even know can immediately see it. And then you can, there's so much cool stuff with Instagram where you can like really get your work out. And um, it, it, especially like, you know, if you're savvy in that way and are able to, like make those sort of connections, but like, you don't have to talk to people, you know, yeah. <laughs> and then, like in the traditional sense anymore to sort of like ma make things and get it out there. Um, a, a couple of years ago, uh, my animation class was lucky enough to, we had, um, Kent Osborne talk to oh, like wow. zoom in who is, um, he worked on SpongeBob and, yeah. uh, and a bunch of different things, but, um, mostly time, known right? for adventure time. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I randomly met him at a party and what? I was like, and I was like at a film festival in Mississippi and I was like, Hey, like, do you think you talk to my animation class? And, uh, and then he was like, sure. And he gave me his phone number. And then I, and, and then I was, and then I texted him. I was like, I, I, were you, are you, were you serious? Were you, were you really do that? And he was like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, his brother directed Kung Fu Panda. Um, Whoa. so like when he called me, he was at his brother's house and he was like, Oh, I'm sleeping on my brother's couch right now. Like, and he like, move the phone over and his brother was like hey hey guys what's up and he was like oh this is my brother he made kung fu panda and um so what? like uh and he made the little prints and a bunch of other stuff too but so wow. the point of telling you this is that he he told us that he that they they hired people from adventure time to work on adventure time from finding them on tumblr whoa and that and wow. so like there are and i have uh had former students too that have gotten very high profile jobs uh, from putting their stuff out on Instagram, YouTube. And it's like, and it seems ridiculous and it seems like a complete shot in the dark. And like, I'm not saying that like, if you put your work on the internet, you're going to get like a job at Disney. Yeah. But like, I know people that it's personally happened to. So like it, like it, it um, and I've heard, and I've heard so many stories. So like, if you're, uh, there's like a tendency to not, want to share the things that you make but like right. if but if you can like like making art is a courageous act all on its own but then like making it and like sharing it and like putting yourself like uh, out there for people to criticize is like unbelievably brave and if you can get over that hump like the, the um it you know people can be mean on the internet too for sure yeah. probably more often than they're nice but if you do that uh, that you you open yourselves up to these kinds of opportunities uh, that you can maybe never even imagine if and and certainly are not possible if you make stuff all the time and leave it on your computer. Though that is also valid, and I think it is totally fine to make things just for yourself and never show anyone. And and but if you uh, are interested in sort of uh, 
you know, progressing in terms of like the people who know about your work and getting your work out there, like that, it can be really incredible what can happen when you're willing to share it. Yeah. It's like the new portfolio. Like it's like, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's so true. Wait. Okay. Now this brings me to another question. I want to talk about your daily Instagram, like really quick. Your daily, okay. The daily posts. Yeah. Um, what was your intention for making that separate account of just posts you do once a day of work? Uh, okay. So this is, I have not really shared this with anyone. I just started making, I sent it to you and I was going to, at some point send it out, but I was trying to get um back into uh, when I was in grad school, we had a, a an artist come like this, like uh, artist named John Simon. He taught a class. I went to VCU and but he came down from New York and, uh, and taught this class, uh, this graduate seminar. And he, he's like one of the original, like new media artists. Like he, he's incredible, but his thing that he got into over the last like 10 years was like, this like a uh, very like kind of regimented daily practice. And this idea that like he does a drawing every single day and he has a website where he posts that drawing every day. And that's like things that I've, I did like a, I did a GIF every day uh, for a year on, oh, wow. um, on, on, on Tumblr, like 10 years ago. And I've done, and I've, I've tried like some different things like, like that for a while. And, uh, but, I, but, I, but I hadn't lately. And, I was trying to, I just started playing around and trying to make things in illustrator. And, um, and, and so I was like, you know, I was making all of this stuff, but I was like, well, I'm just going to start like posting it. But, um, I don't know, like there's too much baggage, like in my regular feed, you know, it's mostly like pictures of my kid. Right, so, right. so I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to just make this separate account. I'm not going to tell anyone about it. And I'm going to start posting. And then, I mean, eventually I think I'll change the name of it and I'll link it to my regular account, but like it was more so just getting in the habit of having a daily, like doing a daily sketch. Like I don't spend very much time on them at all, but like trying to get better, trying to learn new techniques. And I actually got way ahead of myself. So like the, it, they're not, the things that I'm, I'm just posting once a day and it's like helping me to remember to post, but like I, I I'm, I, I've stopped at illustrator and I've moved on to a new program called touch designer that I've been okay. like, very, very involved in trying to learn. It's like a lot of coding and like oh. really outside of my comfort zone. Okay. So, um, I will, I've been working on that and, uh, those, those will start appearing on there later, but um, it was just a way to sort of hold myself accountable to trying to m- make something every day and not be super concerned about whether or not it was good yeah. or that it was like, you know, had a concept or it's just, they're just like daily sketches, but yeah, it's uh it's been, it's been fun to do that. I'm going to try and try and keep it up. I was going to do one of those like, uh, things that allows you to sort of schedule your posts but then um, I was like, no, I'll just do, I'll just like, sometimes I forget, but like normally I kind of remember to like put something up there every day. And it's like, I haven't told anyone about it yet. So it's like, it's just kind of like putting it up there, but then yeah. eventually one day I'll tell some, I'll tell people and then they'll say, oh, wow. Like there's a hundred posts up here already. <laughs> something come through. That's awesome. That's really cool. It's like a, it's like a secret art. Like it's just for you, but it's on the social, like on social media. That's so yeah, yeah. And then sort yeah. of like just like building up this kind of like, and also it's like not connected really in any way to like the work that I normally make. Right. So like I, I, um, it, I know I just thought like I had this feeling that I would just be like spamming my friends if I just like posted one of these drawings like every single day. Like what is ha- what happened to this yeah. guy? You know, <laughs> like why is he just posting these like weird okay? shapes every day? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I get that a lot. Like when I made wear and tear, like I had multiple people reach out to me and be like, are you all right? I was like, not totally, but yeah. like, you know, like, <laughs> like I'm who not is? Great. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. That that's definitely. Yeah. Interesting. No, people, people reach out. That's the best thing about social media, I think, or like putting your work out there is like, you don't have to tell someone how you're feeling. Like you just share your work. And usually if they're tapping into it, like they'll figure it out. Um, which I think is really great. Yeah. Um, okay. Last question. Where can people find you on your, your work? If you want to share. Um, uh, uh, my, uh, my website 
and my um, Instagram are both Robinson Cobras, like the snake, C O R C O B R A S. Um, and then, uh, and then if you click on, if you, if my, my Instagram is, uh, my Instagram is private right now, but, uh, if you follow me on there, I'll accept you. And then, <laughs> and then, and you can see that. And then once you're on there, then you can see the link to the secret daily practice site, but it's, it's <laughs> Robinson Cobras. Perfect. And I'll have it linked in the description. So people can just click on it and go see your work. Um, thank you so much for being on. It was so fun to talk to you. Um, is there any, like, last things you want to say or i don't know last shout outs you want to you want to give um no we got we should cool. do another one of these sometime like i feel like i feel like we i have a lot of questions for you and oh, really? uh, okay. and, and and then we also uh we can uh we never talked about music which is an, <gasps> another another thing that we never talked about or books or anything like that but like i know we're going long so wait we should okay we will schedule another one i'll we'll we'll loop back around for music and books um wait that's so interesting i love music like everything about it so i'm gonna watch those films and Um, then i'm gonna email you again about them or dm you because i am super interested in them okay Um, perfect and we'll we'll do another interview at some point cool yeah yeah thanks so much this was really fun of course um i'm just gonna pause